day, this morning, on the first day of the week that we all could come together in the time of praises and worship. And uh, may God's name be glorified as we uh, spend time together in his temple. Uh, at the outside, I want to thank God for this beautiful opportunity that he gave me to come over to Oklahoma and be with you all for the last couple of days. And uh, today also an opportunity to minister. In the same way, I want to thank dear pastor Shibu for giving me this invitation and also for this opportunity to share uh, from the word of God. I am a firm believer that pulpits must be um, shared very carefully, uh, you know, uh, because that is where people's eternity is decided. So you must share and I believe and thank God for counting me worthy to be on behalf of you on this stage sharing from the word of God and may God bless you all. I want to thank each one of you who are part of this um, process of inviting me to be with here and at the same time the entire uh, church uh, for the last couple of days I enjoyed your friendship, uh, your friendliness to come and talk to a stranger who has come among you and also um, for your hospitality and at this time I must thank Pastor's wife and also uh, George Uti Chan and his wife for the wonderful hospitality they showed towards me. May God bless you abundantly. I enjoyed the food that you served and it was very tasty. Um, missing my food from home after seven months to enjoy it is, I can, I can enjoy it uh, fully. Uh, so thank you so much. Without taking much time, I will go quickly um, to speak from the word. Um, today, I want to speak um, from 1 Kings chapter 8, verses 27 to 30. Now, this is a beautiful section which is part of Solomon's prayer uh, that Solomon makes during the time of the dedication of the temple. Well, Solomon knew it very well that, you know, God had kept this particular assignment for him to do. And it was actually his father's desire, but kept aside for him to be accomplished. So God had actually forbidden his father from doing it and now Solomon has to do it. And the beauty of his whole approach is that right from the beginning as soon as he is enthroned and he take up the, takes up the kingship of the United Kingdom of Israel, he makes it sure that you know he is uh, going to do that particular task at first. Solomon at this time is still has not gone away from God's presence, has not wavered totally. Uh, but there were some beginning stages of, you know, his alienation, which grows up later on, you can find in his alliance with Egypt and all. But this was still a time when he was very honest. He wanted to be a good, God, a good king. He wanted to serve the Lord through his uh, kingship. He wanted to glorify God. So there was a very positive vibe that was created in Solomon. And, you know, he was interested in serving God. This was the time when he undertakes two massive projects. One is of his own palace uh, construction and the second is to, uh, to build this uh, temple. He did everything. In the light of this, Solomon knew very well that the construction of the temple is going to be a landmark event in the history of Israel because this temple is going to control the entire life of the whole nation of Israel. Movenkil, the Old Testament scholar, says that if you remove the temple from the life of Israel, you have removed everything from them and they are nobody. And that is why Solomon's temple plays an important role at this stage because it speaks about God's dwelling among them. And it is a structure which is going to determine the life, daily life of the people where people are going to come and commune with God, meet with God, priestly work will be going on. In that sense, Solomon was a great achiever. Don't we all want to be great achievers? Young ones are here. You are vibrant, potential children. Young ones, you know, universities and other places. We all are aspiring to be the best in our life. An author wants to produce a bestseller book in his lifetime. A preacher wants to be the Spurgeon or the Tertullian of his time. Then, um, you know, an entrepreneur would like to have the most successful business and probably a business conglomeration put together so that he will be celebrated as a wonderful businessman, a great entrepreneur who will be studied by the MBA students probably to understand his business tactics. But then there is something different 
in a way a child of god would look at his success and he should look at that and an early evidences of that you will find in this prayer i want to speak to you about giving our utmost for god's glory giving our utmost for god's glory and in this small section the entire prayer you can study but in this small section from the long prayer of dedication that solomon makes you can derive at least i see a few things that must rule our mind when i am a successful minister is that what god is looking for how do i measure if my success or in my in my job in my work in my ministry in everything how is it going to make sense in god's uh, kingdom especially when jesus in matthew chapter 25 verse 23 he says that ultimately a few words that you will hear from the throne in greeting you would be good and faithful servant it is not great and successful servant so the best you will hear on the last day from the throne is to say good and faithful servant never about the great and successful you know my friends why young ones those who are hearing me remember one thing the success cult is the cult of this world success cult is of the world and it has no biblical foundation rather when god looks at you and me what he wants to see is that we remain faithful to god's call that is why westminster declaration says the sole purpose of human beings creation is that they will do god's will then they will stay in communion with god and solomon knew this great structure he is now building up in israel has to serve god's purpose how would you offer your utmost for god's glory number 1 let me go a little fast in doing it number 1 you see here in Paul, verse 27 and 28 when solomon is praying he is praying that may my achievements acknowledge god's greatness remember when you want to offer your utmost in god for god's glory your achievements must acknowledge god's greatness solomon here is standing before the nation of israel all the people have gathered together and now he is trying to you know make this dedication prayer for the temple and he knows that people are listening to him he is standing there with his lot of pride in him and is saying that i built it i have done it thank you for your grace for this opportunity that you have allowed me to build it what my father wanted to do you allow me to do it several times he says i i i so solomon is not ignorant about the achievement that he has made at this time but when he is standing with that great sense of achievement solomon is very conscious to say in verse 27 but will god really dwell on earth it is a magnificent structure that he has built he has imported wood he has brought people from different far countries to be carpenters carving things gold plating all those things he has done in that beautiful building but still at the time of dedication when his achievement is offered for god's service he comes and makes a simple prayer saying that but will god really dwell on earth the heavens even the highest heavens cannot contain you you know my friends when do we go wrong many times we go wrong because we think our achievements can measure up to god and our achievements can contain god and that's where we go wrong solomon was in his right sense at this moment so all his best achievement he brings and lays before god and then he says he tries to measure it with god who is he and then he says wow i have created this beautiful structure and now this structure is the place where we expect the god to come and dwell but lo and behold can this great creator of the entire universe dwell on earth if he cannot then how much less is the possibility that i can limit god in my small structure how much less this temple i have built exclamation mark he's wondering our achievements cannot contain god but if you want to be towing the right path the one of the best thing is in your best achievements learn to bring it to before god's foot 
and on before his throne and measure it with God. You will get, I will get puffed up with pride if I have a wrong standard. If I start comparing my achievements with my colleagues, if I start comparing my achievement with my friends, my brother, my sister, my neighbor, I have all the reasons to be proud about it. And you will misjudge your own achievements. But the best of your, your utmost for God's glory will require that you put it against God and then compare it in his greatness. You will realize your right place. Try not to contain God's, uh, God in your achievements, but measure your achievements against his greatness. You must have heard about the famous man of God in India, uh, sorry, in America, who has written a lot, you know, some of his books, he, you must read, you know, young couples who are going to get married or thinking about get married, buy some of the books of James Dobson and read about his, you know, suggestions for Christian young women and uh, men and women who want to get married, read, wonderful counselor. James Dobson was a wonderful guy, very smart guy in his school, in his university, he, wherever. So school will send him for inter-college competitions and all that, you know. Uh, so he will go, he will be a great debater, wonderful sportsman. He will bring, wherever he goes, he will bring trophies for the school. So when he was in the school, in the university, all his achievements in the form of trophy were displayed out in the school. But many years passed. One fine day as James Dobson was sitting early morning in his house, somebody knocks at his door. And as someone knocks at his door, he goes and opens it. Here is an old man standing before him. He says that, are you James Dobson? He says, yes. He says, as I was walking, taking a morning walk on this road, I noticed something put near the dustbin. Something glittering there. I went and picked it up and all the trophies have got the name James Dobson, James Dobson. And I knew I had, I knew that you stay here. So I brought all the trophies for you to keep safely because these signify your achievements. James Dobson looked at him, smiled at him and then turned back to him and said, given the right, given right time, your, all your achievements will find its rightful place. Given right time, all your achievements will find its rightful place. All your achievements are to be superseded by somebody else in the history. There has no achievements gone which has not been superseded by somebody else. You wait, the day you create world records, you wait for somebody to break it. Don't make that ultimate in your life. Given time, all your achievements will find its rightful place. And James Dobson's thing Achievements found their rightful place after a few years. When new records were built, made, everything was torn down and thrown into dustbin. Don't compare it with the world. You will be a loser in the eternity. But compare it before God. You will learn to stay humble. You will know what your achievements can do for God's kingdom. Solomon knows that this structure is the place where people have to come and commune with God, relate with God, meet with God, talk to God and receive forgiveness and go back to the world. But he also knows one thing, that this is not the absolute place which can contain God permanently. Because my God for whom I do this structure, I build this structure is way, 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 way greater than what I have ever done for him. The best wood cannot control him. The gold plating on the temple cannot contain him. The best, uh, you know, team of Levites and the high priest serving the temple cannot do it. The best garments prepared cannot contain him. All that matters is you find your achievements at, the go at God's feet. Remember, you stand before an incomparable God beyond our best achievements. Solomon relates with God testifying about his quality and says, in, in, in uh, verse 23, it says, keeping covenant and showing steadfast love. Some of the translations will put it as, uh, you know, um, verse, tw uh, verse 28, you give attention to your servant's prayer and plea, Lord my God, hear the cry and the prayer that your servant is praying in your presence this day. When he refers to it, uh, verse, uh, verse 23, sorry, verse 23 translated as covenant of love. Some of the translations, ESV translated as covenant of love. Like if you compare with NLT, 
which says that keeping covenant and showing steadfast love because god has made a covenant with you to keep you together he says that if you obey my word i will be your god and you will be my people he reveals his will to you but what matters is that it is not your greatness that is going to bring god's favor but it is the steadfast love of the lord never ceases it is that is going to take you forward so do not absolutize your achievements young man young lady who listens to me but keep it subject to god's greatness you will find glory in that your utmost for god's glory number 2 Number 2 when he says in verse 29 your achievements must bear God's presence what is he saying in verse 29 in verse 29 he says may your eyes be opened towards this temple night and day this place of which you said my name shall be there so that you will hear the prayer prayer your servant prays towards this place see Solomon knows very well that this beautiful structure that is constructed here is merely a collection of mortar and stone and wood and other construction pieces if God doesn't make it his dwelling place if God doesn't make it dwelling place this temple this structure has no significance in the history of Israel it will make no difference but when if the god will come down and dwell in this temple by his choice his achievement is going to be radically transformative in the history of israel you know what was solomon's um, moses's prayer in exodus chapter 33 15 and 16 when israel had committed sin and got wrong completely moses makes a very meaningful prayer he says lord if your presence if you do not go with us God said my presence will go Yahweh said but then he says if you do not go with us do not allow us to go from here you know why how then shall the nations know who we are Lord your presence must go your blessing is lying in front of us yes we will inherit the promised land even if your angels go before us we will inherit the promise but oh lord your promise is fulfilled without you is going to be meaningless for us if you do not go with us do not allow us to go from here anymore let us stay here if your presence is here in this wilderness may we be here but if we occupy the promised land it must be accompanied by your presence among us that makes the difference my friends your greatest achievement if doesn't have god's presence in it you will achieve but only to find its rightful place in the dustbin in the coming days may we become engineers may we become doctors may we become may we become astronauts why not the greatest in the land let us do our utmost but let's remember it's for the if it is for the glory of god if it is not to bring pride to you and your family individually if it is for the glory of god your best must bear the presence of god if not you will lose out in your life i will lose out in my life my publications will make no difference there are greater writers but only when my publication will make sense to with youngsters when they will understand the depth of the scripture when they will say that when i read his commentary and his books i can experience god and i can understand the depth of the scripture praise be to god my utmost for his glory when you become a doctor and a patient says by his loving words and the way genuineness of his treatment makes me to experience that healing touch in my life oh that is for the glory of god when you are loving touch as a nurse in the hospital when you will do a loving touch and sweet talk with the patient energizes the weak one in the body you are utmost for the glory of god ministry is not just about preaching and being a pastor and bible scholar but ministry is doing the will of god wherever you are placed a teacher who can speak into the life of the young child and we put the fear of the god in their heart in the young days is a ministry in the school that you can do the church may recognize may not recognize that as a ministry but you are in the business of god because you are touching the lives of people 
let your achievements bear the presence of god it means continuing in god's watch he says that you know here the cry and prayer uh, was to, sorry may your eyes be open towards the temple day and keep watch over us my stru- the structure that i have built will lose its value but if not you are continuously taking watch over it and the people who come there lord your eyes must be set upon us this place of which you said my name shall be god when he calls you into his body into christ to be a new humanity to be the handiwork of god the sole purpose of god is to make sure that his presence dwells in you that is why he calls you the holy temple individually you are called the holy temple collectively as a church you are called a holy temple that is where you become the christophers in this world the bearers of christ in this world because god doesn't call you away from him to keep himself away from you but he calls you to make you his pleasing dwelling place everything that flows out of this body from this life must be bearing the presence of god finally your achievements must prepare altar of reconciliation your achievements must prepare altar of reconciliation that's a very beautiful prayer that he makes in verse 30 he says hear the supplication of your servant and your people israel when they pray towards this temple hear from heaven your dwelling place and when you hear underline for the first time he uses this word in his prayer forgive forgive the temple that is built is wonderful people need to come and meet god there and pray to god and this must be the center of the life of israel but remember one thing lord these people for whom you have given guidance for the structure to be built whom you bought and miraculously saved them from egypt you performed wonders and fulfilled your promise to give them this promised land lord but they will commit sin solomon was not so foolish to think that this people will be perfect always in his ways but he says lord but when they fall from your word when they move away from your will this must be the place that they will find a place to reconcile once again with you once again come back and meet you that is a prayer of reconciliation in his best achievements my friends when we achieve great things in this world remember one thing it must be for the reconciliation of the world you might be becoming a great ceo of a company somebody might make you a big leader in a particular organization you know why for that that as you deal and meet with people you are achieved highest of your life the best you can achieve is for god or is for people to recognize the god who is present in you and then say that i want to be reconciled with, with this god our achievements and how we practice it must not put away people to be excellent you must be careful that ultimately as a child of god your life your achievement must be a meeting place for the rest of the people solomon is praying here he is praying not only for the people of israel little he repeats that verse verse 34 later on he repeats that in verse uh, uh, 36 and then um, later on in you know 39 and then he comes to verse 43 and 44 uh, especially 43 he says that so that all the he praying for the gentiles he says so that all the people of the earth may know your name and fear you make your dwelling in my biggest achievement to god that even when foreigners will come into this place and will look from here up to the heavens and want to rec- meet you and they will make prayers hear their prayers from this dwelling place from your dwelling place you know why so that all was 43 so that all the people of the earth may know your name and fear you that is the glory Amen. that is the glory of god when you are life your achievements will draw people to meet the god who is the source behind all your successes that's the time they will say i want this jesus in my life if he can make such a transformation in your life if he can be the source of your achievements i need him and i want to fear him in my life solomon's temple will become a cult if it is not a meeting place for the nations 
and that is why in the book of solomon isaiah and other places solomon is making uh, isaiah speaks about the failure of the nation of israel you were called to be the light to the nations that's what solomon uh, isaiah says that was god's plan but with the cultic system emerging and the law given and all that practices somehow israel over the time for god god's purpose through their life they enjoyed the privilege of receiving the law and exalted themselves above others in exclusion others must not meet with us but isaiah reminds saying that you are called to be the light to the nations why light because in the light they will find reconciliation children of god you are god your your generation your previous forefathers and forefathers must have been brought into this land to enjoy the benefits he has blessed you so much but oklahoma ipc hebron church needs to become a place where god's dwelling is found and this is the place where they must the nations must be able to come and meet god and receive forgiveness Amen. young man young lady in the university when the lord takes you when he keeps you there among your friends remember your best achievement must be the place where your friends who do not know jesus will say i want this jesus because i see the power of god working in your life that is where the reconciliation if not your utmost is not for glory and if so you have lost god's purpose in your life may god bless us through these words and the opportunity given to me may god bless you and i want to thank you for that remember me and my family in your prayers my young girls me as a father and my wife may god's glory be done through our life and we what i preach may i be able to practice in my life i want to be called the good and faithful at the end if not if success is not the criteria of the bible and i am convinced success is the cult of the world but god has called you to be good and faithful and that's all you will hear the best two words from the throne when you approach him god bless you